Lutheran deaconesses serve Christ by serving their neighbor. They receive their office of service from the very person of Jesus himself, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. All Christians are called to this service, but deaconesses embody this life of diaconia as called laborers in Christ's church to demonstrate in their lives and actions the mercy and compassion of Christ. The motto of Lutheran deaconesses says it best, what is my want? I want to serve. Whom do I want to serve? The Lord in his suffering ones and his poor. The church cannot be the church without diaconia the mercy and love of Jesus Christ directed towards suffering and need. Through deaconesses, this happens where there is shame, hurt, pain, injustice, bigotry, violence, and abuse, wherever people are on the margins. When Christ's body shows mercy, it serves Christ by serving the least of these my brethren, providing the hungry with food, the thirsty with drink, welcoming strangers into the community of saints, clothing the naked and visiting the sick and those who are in prison. A deaconess brings a uniquely feminine care, perceiving need and responding with gentle helpfulness, expressing the compassion of Christ in a tender, nurturing way. She serves by using her skills and theological training to embody Christ's care in the midst of suffering. A deaconess serves alongside a pastor, attending to those in need and being with them. She points them to the pastor and the means of grace where Christ comes to them in his body to join them to himself for eternity. This definition has been adapted by many deaconesses in our church to describe the office of deaconess. The Lutheran deaconess is an auxiliary office in which women are called and commissioned by the church to provide diaconal care with special emphasis in works of mercy, spiritual care, and teaching the faith, by which they guide others to word and sacraments provided by the Office of the Public Ministry. Through the loving service and financial means of women, Jesus and his apostles were aided in a three-year ministry of teaching and performing miracles. These same women appear again prominently as witnesses of Jesus' death and resurrection. While pastors carry on the work of apostles among us, the deaconess office was created in Christian freedom to ensure that the church carries on the practical work of serving human needs. One example is Phoebe, who met the needs of the saints, needs best met by a woman. Phoebe's loving service became the foundation for the order of deaconesses in the early church. She expressed the gift of hospitality, hosting apostles and saints who were about the ministry of the word in much the same manner as the women who assisted Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. Deaconesses have served as leaders among the women of the church, primarily as caretakers of the suffering and the poor. They also supported and advised women catechumens in applying the teaching of the bishop to matters of feminine propriety. They assisted in the baptism of women, visited the sick and the Christians in prison, took care of the believing women in the homes of unbelievers, and ministered to those who were unable to worship with the faithful. Although the Reformation affirmed the role of diaconia in the church, it was not until the early 19th century that deaconess vocation again experienced a resurgence in the Lutheran Church under the guidance and separate efforts of Wilhelm Lea and Theodor Fliedner. Both pastors Lea and Fliedner were instrumental in providing deaconesses for congregations and institutions in the United States. Today there are about 100 deaconesses in active service in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, standing in continuity with Phoebe and all deaconesses who have served their Lord by serving their neighbor. The question is this, what can a deaconess do for us? In this American culture, we look for a specialized job description 
but the simple response is this. The deaconess will awaken your congregation to its diaconal work. Deaconesses provide three main areas of service, spiritual care, mercy, and teaching of the Christian faith. The goal of all three areas of deaconess service is the same, that the love of Christ sets people free. All three are designed to bring our flesh and blood Christ to people who are themselves struggling with the realities of being flesh and blood humans. The household of faith is full of wandering sheep like us. A deaconess responds to vulnerable people with merciful and spiritual care, demonstrating that their shepherd indeed loves them and cares for them. She is able to identify and engage appropriate resources in the church and community to provide assistance and she knows whom she can trust to care appropriately. She continues spiritual care alongside the care provided from outside the church. Deaconesses can serve and aid diaconia in spiritual care in congregations, institutions, and missions by assisting pastors in the visitation of the sick, elderly, and lonely, providing spiritual care for women with special needs, working with children, youth and the elderly by teaching Bible classes, confirmation, and vacation Bible school, teaching developmentally disabled children and adults, administrating the social ministry of the church, such as a Good Samaritan Fund, the food pantry, and clothing bank, enabling the congregation to respond to human care needs in the congregation, school, synod, community, and world, enabling care for people who are marginalized because they do not speak English, the deaf, refugees, legal and illegal immigrants, and displaced families. Leading care for families, serving as family life educators who prepare families to deal with life's challenges. Uh, I came to Concordia College and um, started off with my studies in theology as my major and communications as my minor. And then I really was inspired by the Confessions, Lutheran Confessions, Book of Concord, and it inspired me. Of course, the Holy Spirit was working in me. In spiritual care, I assist the pastor in visitations, hospital visitations, nursing homes, and homebounds, having one-on-one -on -one devotions and counseling and mentoring them whatever grief they have. In educational ministry, I take care of Sunday school, superintendent of Sunday school. That means including the, choosing the curriculum uh, in consultation of pastor, organizing monthly teachers meeting and giving them a curriculum of my own handouts and the other area would be as a director of youth ministry where I teach the youth uh, every week for the Bible study and uh, organizing activities for them, fundraising, then being a mentoring and counseling. If a woman wants to really be a deaconess, uh, the first thing I would encourage her to is sh to share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the ministry of acts of mercy and teaching the Christian faith, which the Holy Spirit will certainly bless her and help her to walk according to God's will. My first call was uh, part-time spiritual life director at Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch and also part-time uh, youth director at Grace Lutheran Church. So I did get the the feel of you know how the church service is, um, but I you know enjoy the institution. There is just no typical day. A lot of days um, are filled with meetings, you know, paperwork. Um, I get we have weekly groups with the residents. We have either spiritual life groups or moral development groups. I try to get together with the, the residents, you know, once a week just to say hello, touch base, see what they're doing what's happening in their lives. I'm involved in a lot of trainings. I give trainings for uh, spiritual life to the staff. I feel that the kids have already been impacted by the law, 
they have experienced the fallenness of the world. They've had awful things happen to them, and they've done. Some of them have done awful things too. So, um, sharing the gospel with the kids is sweet service. It's um, amazing when I connect with some of the kids, and I don't always see spectacular results. But God calls us to faithful service, not not uh, spectacular results. I served at St. Paul's Lutheran Church for almost 30 years and uh, enjoyed every minute of, of it. To serve as a deaconess, I think the most important thing is to have the desire to serve. To serve our Lord, to serve His people, to serve His children, wherever and however and whenever the need is there. I have done everything from um, being at the birth of a baby and uh, to go from that, that wonderful experience of new life to walk through a whole lifetime, many generations, and to hold the hand, which I did, of a lady of 102 as she left this life and entered life eternal. It's just marvelous that the Lord gave me the privilege to do that. If you want a vocation that is totally different, that hones in to the skills and talents and abilities that the Lord has given you, then consider deaconess ministry. There are currently three Lutheran Church Missouri Synod training sites for women in the Synod who desire to become deaconesses. Concordia University at River Forest, Illinois, Concordia Theological Seminary at Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Concordia Seminary at St. Louis, Missouri. Each of these programs is committed to excellence in educating deaconesses to become competent theologians and professional practitioners of diaconia in the areas of spiritual care, mercy care, and teaching of the Christian faith. This education takes place both inside and outside of the classroom. Deaconess students undergo rigorous academic and theological training. Core characteristics of deaconess education are consistent amongst these synodical schools and include classes in exegetical, historical, practical, and systematic theology, along with diaconal history and skills. To translate classroom theory into meaningful service, all deaconess students do field work or on-the-job training in parishes and institutions. Finally, all deaconess students usually serve at least a year-long full-time internship in a parish or institution for which they are compensated with salary and benefits. Interns have served in congregations as well as in hospitals, in institutions for the aged, and developmentally disabled, and in missions throughout the United States and overseas. While each training site offers Master of Arts programs, Concordia University River Forest provides the only undergraduate Bachelor of Arts Deaconess program. That program is five years long, with four years of coursework and one year of internship. Master of Arts programs are about three years long, with two years of coursework and one year of internship. Upon successful completion of a program, the student is eligible for calls to LCMS parishes, missions, and RSOs, or Recognized Service Organizations of the LCMS. Graduates receive their first placements through the Synodical Placement Office on each campus. After receiving and accepting a call, a deaconess is placed on the LCMS roster as a Minister of Religion commissioned. Standing alongside the pastor who dispenses Christ's gifts, deaconesses bind up the brokenhearted and the distressed both from inside and outside the church. They go out from the door of the church and bring in Christ's lost and broken lambs into his sheepfold. There the pastor feeds these lambs by bringing them into communion with Christ through word and sacrament. 
Throughout our church today, watch for deaconesses to declare humbly through their diaconia, what is my want? I want to serve. Whom do I want to serve? The Lord in his suffering ones and his poor. The opportunities for serving the Lord by serving his suffering ones and his poor are great. Perhaps God is calling you to this wonderful office of service. Talk to your pastor and other church workers about what you just heard about deaconess service. Perhaps you might want to support our programs of deaconess studies with your prayers and gifts. Please consider making a gift to sustain the service of deaconesses in our church. May the Lord, who has taken us into the death and resurrection of his Son in our baptism, and who nourishes us on the body and blood of Christ, make us into the vehicle of love and joy in this world until we offer the full and perfect praise forever. Amen.